<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Pizza Time Chronicles. It's time to get lost in the pizza sauce. Everybody, we're starting off 2022 with a great special guest, ladies and gentlemen. You should love her already. If you do not know her, this is Serena Torres. Everybody, Serena, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Serena, and I'm the owner of Serena's Berries LLC. Oh my God, Serena, it is so great to see you once again. The last time I saw you was at the Pennsylvania Latino Convention. How are you doing, Serena? Um, I'm okay. Actually, school just wrapped up, so I'm pretty interested in taking a break for a while, but I'm always doing berries year-round, so that's fun. And where are you currently attending college? Um, I go to Kutztown University. Oh, interesting. I, I, I have some experience there. Oh. <laughs> Here's a bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, Serena, it's so great to see you. Um, you're doing great things. Um, young entrepreneur, you're still in school. I mean, talk a little bit about your business. What do you offer Serena's Berries? Um, well, I have an assortment of treats, which you can find a menu at serenasberriesllc.org on the internet or like my Facebook or Instagram or anything. But I do like um, customizable chocolate covered strawberries. And then I do chocolate covered Oreos, kind of just like a lot of different like baked goods, but it's more of like catered to like events and like holidays and stuff, not just like your regular, like, oh, I'm just going to throw chocolate on something and put it like out for my kids to eat. So. And her berries are definitely very good. I ordered from her um, during the Pennsylvania Latino convention and they were very good. So make sure you definitely place your orders with Serena, especially if you're around the Allentown, Burst County area. Um, she will deliver. I, I think she delivered it last time. So. <laughs> <laughs> So for a Serena, small fee, for a small fee. Of course, <laughs> you got to make money out here. Uh, so True. Serena, how does it feel being a young entrepreneur? Um, sometimes I feel like it's really overwhelming, actually. It feels like a lot of pressure and I'm always like busy and doing stuff. And I feel like because I'm so young, a lot of people like expect a lot out of me, especially the way I carry myself. And then people like my age, they come to me sometimes for like advice on different things. So like, I feel like it's a great privilege, but it also comes like with different responsibilities and how people see you and expectations and how you have to carry yourself all the time. Because like I walk around as like Serena, but I'm also the head of my company. So it's like I can't portray myself in a certain manner that would make me look bad because why would you want to buy something from someone who has a bad reputation or can't like present themselves properly? So it's like kind of a mixture sometimes. It can be overwhelming, but it's definitely great in its own way like when I'm really it's like my love project when I'm really passionate about it it feels really good but like when you have a paper due and you have like a bunch of orders and then I'm in a sorority so like I have events to do for there too it can definitely get overwhelming at times well you're definitely a standout people absolutely loved you at the Pennsylvania <laughs> Latino convention and they love you now I, I I commend you and I applaud you because you you are very busy. You know, you got this business, which is very successful. And you also, you got your college career and you're just doing it all. And it's very impressive, especially at your age. Um, you know, and it jumps into my next question. How do you create balance? How do you find the time? Um, I feel like sometimes it's just about prioritizing and I'm not gonna lie, there's a lot of nights where like I don't sleep or like I'm doing three things at once. But I feel like if you can like, it's like weird, if you can find like some sort of balance, like, okay, like in the beginning, I would take orders like a day before. But now on my website, you have to order a week in advance so I can plan my week out. So I know when I have to go make my berries or when I can go back to school. And I feel like keeping a calendar is a really big thing as well. And like looking at your syllabus and mapping out your day and stuff like that. And I also work a full-time job. So when I'm at work, sometimes I plan like my stuff. And then it's kind of like, not my me time, but it's like a little less hectic because like no one can call me and I can't just leave my job whenever. So. And does it feel good to be like the owner of something? Like considering how many people our age will take that risk. Does it feel great having like something that you can claim as your own through your LLC? I feel like I definitely... It definitely feels great and it's a sense of pride, but I feel like it just makes me want to do more. Like I'm so young and I've created this thing and like people that are older than me look up to me, but it's like, 
I feel like we shouldn't measure our accomplishments and what we want to do in our life based upon other people. So like, I think it's great that I have a business and that I've figured this stuff out, but like me for my personal self, I want to do more and I am going to do more. So it kind of just drives me like, oh, well I have this. So like what other kind of passive income can I make so that I can fulfill my dreams in other ways? What other careers can I do? How can I help people in my community? Stuff like that. And, you know, obviously owning a business at this, at this age, you know, there can be some discouraging moments. Um, can you describe a moment that you felt discouraged, but you know at the end that this is what you wanted to do? Um, I feel like this quarter has been really slow for me. And like sometimes it's really discouraging because I do pour a lot of money into my business. But then like on the other hand, you know, you have to put money in order to like make money. But yeah, definitely when like sales are down, it's just a little discouraging because like I make my own website. So I sit there and I design everything and I come up with these different things. And like, I know that like not everybody's going to want to buy stuff all the time, but I feel like as long as I keep going, like people are going to buy, like I have little customers and like people that come back to me, like, especially like for holidays and stuff, like sometimes I do have to cancel orders because I just blatantly run out of things. So like, that's kind of discouraging, but I always try to like at least give them a refund and give them something for free or try to like make it. Cause I feel like it's really important to like present yourself in like a, not like, in like a nice manner to your customers. Like I definitely always want to be like a one with my customer service. It's like very important to me. Oh, of course, of course. And, you know, you talk on uh, something that really stood out to me during the, the legacy summit portion of, and you did present at that. favorite our favorite portion of the convention. <laughs> You're very, of course, it's your favorite portion. <laughs> um, but, you know, something that really stood out to me was at the end of your presentation where you highlighted different businesses and these businesses, not only close friends of yours, but, you know, it, it really stood out to me because it shows the importance of promoting other businesses. Um, so what is your message to other small businesses when it comes to that? Is, is it important to support other small businesses or is it, you know, what, what's your view on that? I feel like it definitely is because I've gotten clients from word of mouth and word of mouth is very strong, especially in the POC community. Cause it's like, you're going to trust people that you trust. So like recommendations are so important. And I feel like it doesn't really cost you any money to like, like, and share and like, basically like boost other people's confidences. So like, I might not always have the money to buy something, nor do I have the need for the product, but it's not going to kill me to share it with my own platform because you never know what you're going to get in return. And I feel like if you put good out, you get good back. All right. And Serena, what, for what's next for you? You know, we talk about, I know you and me have a long, long conversations. <laughs> I know you sometimes call me at very random moments, but we end up <laughs> speaking for like three hours. You know, what do you feel is next for you? I actually want to start becoming the place where people buy the berry products from so like i want to be like a distributor as well so like for other small businesses and like i want to make my own stuff so like instead of buying the stencils from other companies i want to be able to make mine or like instead of going through a third party distributor how can i find the own my own distributor so i'm kind of trying to cut out the middleman so i can keep more of the profit and i would love to help out other local people that do what i do like there's no reason that we should have to pay 30 dollars for something that's five dollars to make so Honestly, Serena, I work with you a lot and, you know, I, I can honestly call this and this is not a prediction, everybody. This is a spoiler where I see this woman going in the next 10 years. She's going to be on Forbes magazine. She's going to be selling berries, not only in Allentown, but across this nation. Um, I don't, I, don't, I don't think I, I don't think I want to. <laughs> I don't I don't think I, tr I don't think I trust anybody else to do my berries. I feel like this is like a passion project for me and I'd love to be like on a like countrywide scale for something else like something like a nonprofit to help women or to help like people in my community like I want this to be able to feed like a passionate side of my soul so that I can have like an economic side of my soul like I I love making money from berries like it's nice to like do something and you're like oh this is mine to keep but like I definitely want to keep it as a passion project because I feel like sometimes when we get driven by like the economy and money, we forget why we started it. Like I started it in my boyfriend's mom's kitchen. Like it's not something that I would really like want to do. I wouldn't mind like going around and catering events, but like to have a store somewhere else that like I couldn't be a part of. I feel like 
when you have a small business, you are what makes the business. Like my business is my business because I put my personal touch. And if I put other people in charge of that, I feel like it kind of loses the essence. And like the reason the berries come out so good is because I actually care about how they come out. You know, I, and I think that's the great thing about having an LLC, you know, that ownership, especially when you get that LLC on your own, it's yours to keep. It's your baby. It's your passion, you know, your services that you offer. Um, you know, I have... I have an LLC, if you all have not known already, um, I do have a public speaking and life coaching business. And you, you do wake up with that sense is like, I, I, I own something like this is a part of what I contribute to the economy. Um, and I can see I what like you're it hasn't, I feel like it hasn't hit me yet. Like, I know that like, I like own it. And like, I know that a lot of people think that like, I have my life together and I'm doing so much, but like, I don't think it hits me like I want to do so much more right. sometimes I feel like it's not enough a little bit but I feel like we should we shouldn't tell ourselves that because like there's so many different paths and like what people are doing and where they're going right. but like and you know this is a great thing about being young and as young as we are we have time you know our 20s is pretty much for us to figure everything out so that our 30s is us executing and our 40s and 50s hopefully is just enjoying our lives and enjoying our passions and, you know, and the good thing about our age now in our generation, you know, we can make that happen by our third, by 30. Yeah. I feel like we got a jump start on it. Like All I didn't right. see myself owning a business or starting something from scratch at the age of like 19, 20 years old. And I didn't see myself becoming the youngest person to speak at the Latino convention, but sometimes opportunities arise. And I feel like people see things in ourselves that like we wouldn't necessarily see, but I don't know I feel like your age doesn't really matter like I follow a small business on Facebook and I think he's like 11 years old and he does right. pop-up shops and makes his own candles like it's it's actually really cool right and you know and the great thing about having an LLC you can offer different services I mean you know you offer berries you may eventually want to break out and start selling stencils you might want like you say you may want to offer like fun kits for families um I'm about to trademark this I'm just kidding um <laughs> You know, I like that I can also like donate and like work with other companies too. Like I want to do something with like um, a personal chef in the area. Like I texted her about it. Like it would be so cool for small businesses to like buy ingredients and sponsor for her to like make food so we can give back to the community. It's like she's donating her time or donating the resources. And I feel like if we don't give back anything, there's really just no purpose in what we're doing at this point. Exactly. And you know, with my, with my LLC, you know, I'm not always going to be booked for speaking. I'm not going to always have life coaching sessions, but very soon I'm going to be putting out a book. Um, I have seen the cover, sneak peek. Very, uh, I'm going to put out that cover many times next month. <laughs> Pre-sale coming available soon, everybody. Um, you heard it here first. <laughs> you heard it here first. But you know, you never know. And I think that's a good thing about what you're doing. You know, you're diving in and so much and, you know, it could be stressful. It can be time consuming, but you know that it's all going to be worthwhile at the end because it's all going to come down to experience. And maybe this does become your full time business. This is all you do, you know, and you break out and you have more time, you know, but th that's the thing about jumping on things early, you know, yeah, we're ahead no, I don't want to cut you off. No, I, I don't think it'll be the only thing I do. Like I love, I like, I work for your company as well. The legacy summit, like I like to do more than one thing and I like to offer many different services. And I feel like that's what keeps me interested. Cause I'm not a type of person that's just like same thing every day. Like it, it's fun. Sometimes I'm at the PL Latino convention. Sometimes I'm in KU. Sometimes I'm in Allentown. It's very versatile here. <laughs> exactly. And you know, that's a good thing about jumping on things early. You know, we're, we're kicking off the year 2022. A lot of people have new goals. And, you know, I, I have released a video on my page, on my other page, the GeoEffect page. You know, consistency is key. I, I have to say that January is probably the most motivating month of the year. It's the most inspirational month of the year, but it's then it's my birthday. It's because it's, it's my birthday. <laughs> it's your birthday, but you know the gyms are packed. I don't know what the whole Omicron variant. I don't know how packed it's gonna be, but you know, let's just say pre-pandemic times. You know, the gym is packed. Everything is packed. Everybody's jumping on things. But it's when February hits. It's when March hits. April. That's when people start becoming inconsistent, falling off. It's like is that consistency piece, you know, and I know that being a business owner, it can be stressful, it can be draining, but it's about remaining 
consistent. Um, I honestly feel like that's what makes myself and my business stand out because like, I feel like many people think that what I do is just so easy and it's fast money, but like some months I'm negative. Like some months I, I pour, I constantly pour my own paycheck. My family buys me things like, and it's just about like the fact that like, I'm known for this now. And like, I'm always here. Like I have a page, I have a website, I have an LLC. Like I created this consistency. Like even if I took a month off, I own this. I can go back to it whenever I feel like. And I feel like sometimes I get discouraged because like people will buy from other people because that's who they know. And I feel like there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and like down talk anybody, but like consistency is key. And I've been doing this for over a year now. So it's like, I don't know, it gets like, repetitive a little bit sometimes so I like to switch right. it up and it's nice like when you get to learn different designs and stuff you start doing different things but like people know like Serena's berries like this is where you go for your stuff so and you know what's crazy Serena I know we have these conversations but if you really reflect look how far ahead you are right now even if you have those discouraging moments you just got to sit there and be like wow I really have my own business and it doesn't hit you because when you do all the filing and stuff, all the paperwork and obviously ink file, use ink file. Uh, <laughs> if, if you can, I mean, it's so, it's so much easier. Um, but once you see like that business is official, it changes your life. It basically changes your perspective on things. And, you know, I'm not saying for everybody, obviously, if you want to start a business, I mean, by all means, just have the LLC, you know, and that's and like Serena says, you can come back to it. You know, if it does, it's not working out, you know, don't go automatically to, you know, dissolve it unless you have an actual business and, and building and whatnot. Obviously, that's that's your choice. But, you know, I really highly consider, you know, starting your own thing. And especially during this time where, you know, we're in a time called the Great Resignation, where a lot of people are leaving their jobs if they're not passionate about it. You know, a lot of people are taking their mental health into consideration now. A lot of pride, like completely different from our parents' generation, especially coming from like Latinos and Puerto Ricans and Hispanics. Like they're taught, like you have to work, like you have no choice, like you are a hard worker. And it's not that we're not hard workers. I feel like we just value ourselves more. I'm not going to kill myself for someone else to make money, especially when they don't take anything into consideration. And it's like some jobs you don't even end up with a retirement. So why am I going to sit here and work like a job that's taking me nowhere, which not even like to talk down about people who have like jobs like that because we need workers at every level and you should respect right. everybody no matter where they come from or what they work for but I feel like a lot of corporations just look at us as numbers and not people right. and it's so important to know your power like if all the Hispanics in PA just decided to quit trucking and working in warehouses there wouldn't be anything to distribute right. like they need to realize that like we do have control over it and you can advocate for yourself and I think it's great too, you know, um, not only are they like resigning from a job, some people don't start their own business. They end up going, get a skill and going into the work, um, the trade workforce, which again is, there's like a million, over a million jobs available when it comes to certain trades. There's not enough skilled workers to fill them. And now people are literally, they quit their job. They go into school, which is getting paid for buy the what company I, because they buy want the company because yeah they, you know, i mean it's it's amazing what's happening right now you know obviously you know i know there's so like, many job shortages but you know you're you're starting to see like i feel like are, knowledge is power and the more we educate our people the better we'll be exactly so i feel like even if my company never goes anywhere i've still like helped people get their llc's i've still told them stuff like i've still told them where i get my business cards from like stuff like that just matters and I feel like when they see someone like me that's their age doing it, it's like, oh, I can do that too. Like, how does she do it? Like, so I, did, I feel like it definitely opens up like a lot of people's point of view because I feel like some people come from different backgrounds and like certain like ways of life are just shoved upon people in like both aspects. So it's like, it's nice to be able to be like, wow, you're only 20. Like you work a full-time job, you go to school, but you can do it. And I'm like, if I can do it, you can do it. Like I'm a mess and look at me. Like, <laughs> this is every conversation no <laughs> um <laughs> serena sometimes likes to call me like gio i'm a mess and i i'm like i just kind of recuperate i make her reflect on this on the same thing that she's doing great and way ahead 
than what she's thinking. Um, sometimes when we like, slow down, yeah, we, we're just like our own worst enemy. Like I'm like, no, I could do more. Like I, I got this. And like, I have to realize that like, I'm in my own lane. Like I'm on a time clock for my own life. Like I don't need to like look at like people who are like 47 and have had like 20 more years on me. And I'm like, I need to do that. When in reality, like some things do take time. Like you're not just going to like be rich overnight. Like you have to put in hard work and effort in anything that you do. Well, Serena, no matter what you do, you're going to do great. Like I said, you're going to hit national levels for something, whether that's selling berries or, you know, starting that nonprofit that you want to. Um, you're going to be hitting national levels and you're doing great work with the Legacy Summit, which we are returning next year. Um, we don't know where yet. Um, I know a lot of people are like, oh, he's probably going to reveal the site. I don't even know where it's at. I'm on the damn team and I don't even know where it's going to be at. Um, but we Hopefully you find out soon. Hopefully it's yes. in Allentown. Listen, nobody knows. Um, <laughs> Only Norman. Only Norman. Norman. Only Norman. Norman needs to be on this show, maybe eventually, when he's not in yeah. Puerto Rico. He's in Puerto Rico all the time. He's always living his best life, as he should. As he should. You know, Norman is 21 years old. He is <laughs> 21 for the third time. <laughs> 21 for the third time. Um, you know, but, you know, Serena, I always end every show with the same question. You know, I don't know if you do like pizza, but... What is your favorite pizza and where is that pizza from? Um, I'm not really a big pizza fan. And sometimes I take the cheese off because I'm weird. <laughs> My favorite pizza would have to be from Domino's, the thin crust with bacon, because it's not too cheesy. So I can mess with that. But other than that, I'm not really a big pizza eater. Don't they have, um? don't they sell like bowls of cheese now? I don't know. That's nasty. I think it's like cheese dip. No, I anyway, I don't know. That would hurt my stomach. <laughs> Domino's doesn't promote me to be sponsoring, mentioning your name. Anyway, um, they go find a local Domino's. Shoot, they might give you a gift card or sponsor you if you put them on your show. I'm not gonna lie, the, the Domino's at Kutztown hits different. I never, I never was it's a always huge, open too. <laughs> exactly, I wasn't this huge Domino's fan until I got to Kutztown, but obviously those days are over. But anyway, everybody, thank you so much. For the first episode of Pizza Time Chronicles of 2022, we have many more guests joining us. Serena's not the only one. Serena might return. Who knows? Maybe. I'll start another business so I can come back on and get a second spotlight. <laughs> no, you can just promote the same one. <laughs> or she might be president the next time that she comes on. Maybe me and Chana will do it for Legacy Summit. We'll have a special one for you to ask yes. us questions. Yes, we will. Maybe we'll do it live at the, like, Ooh. at the PA Latino convention. I'm seeing it got, maybe Legacy Summit will become its own thing. Who knows what will happen the next time? Ideas are flowing. Write them ideas down. Ideas are flowing. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Until next time. And everybody, please remember, don't get too lost in the pizza sauce because that's too much sodium. Everybody, <laughs> until next time.